All right, let's do a refresher on those sine and cosine graphs. Um, we probably won't actually go as deep into this as you did in a trig class, but we wanna make sure we remember these graphs so we can use them for some other stuff later. Um, so the sine graph was the one that started at zero, went through pi, back up to two pi, and that has to do with the y values making a full circle, right? The y values start at zero, they go up to one, so that would be this part, and then they come down back to zero when we hit pi. And then they decrease to negative one down to three pi over two. And then they come back to zero. And that would be one cycle. And then we just kind of repeat this over and over because we're just making circles over and over. And then similar idea for cosine. Um, cosine is the x values, so we start at 1, and it decreases the x values, right, are 1, and now the x values are 0, so that's that part of the circle, and now they're going to go down to negative 1, right, x is negative 1 over here, and now they're going to come back to 0, right, x is 0 here, I should have been a different color. Piece. And then the final piece is the circle finishing up and coming back to one. And that makes one loop. And again, it just repeats and repeats. So domain for sine x and cosine x is negative infinity to infinity, right? We can, any number is allowed to be plugged in. We can plug in angles as big as infinity, right? The angles just keep going. But the range is negative one to one, right? Those are the biggest numbers we get negative one to one, the y values. Um, the period is the length of one cycle. And so with the standard graph, that's two pi, right? This is with no transformations or anything. Um, we might remember that sine is odd. See, we have the um, symmetry about the origin. It also tells us that sine of negative x is equal to negative sine of x. Cosine of x is even, you'll notice the symmetry about the y-axis, right? If you folded it, it would be the same. And that tells us that cosine of negative x is cosine of x. So just some properties we'll want to keep track of. Um, and then I'll just remind you of all the like transformations, which we actually covered in chapter 2 as well. So that relates to trig. Um, Amplitude was how tall the graph was, and that has to do with those vertical stretches or compressions. So it'll stretch or compress, right? As A gets bigger, it stretches. If A is smaller, it compresses. Um, we'll do these in a second. Um, horizontal stretches. Actually, let's color code this. It's the amplitude. Um, that was the coefficient on the inside. So it'll stretch when B is small, it'll compress when B is bigger. And it basically changes the length of each cycle. So rather than the period being two pi, the length of each cycle being two pi, the, the length will be two pi over B. Um, what else? We have phase shifts and then we have vertical shifts. And then we'll look at graphs. So phase shifts are the same as horizontal shifts, so those are the plus C inside parentheses. Um, the B does affect the horizontal shift because technically um, we factor out the B and it would be X plus C over B. So the shift is actually by C over B. And it goes negative uh, to the right if negative, just like horizontal shifts and to the left if positive. And then D, I think, is probably the most straightforward one. Um, it's just outside. It just shifts the graph up. 